Whoa, wow, <laughs> howdy folks. It's Monday and something big has come down the line at me here. So I guess we're gonna have to deal with this today. Gonna talk, I uh, wanted to talk about 3D printing because I love working with wood. I've got saws and power tools and all the usual stuff that most garage you know, gang like myself should have. But 3D printers seem to offer some tremendous things. I've got two 3D printers this morning running a job off just for example, but there's also a thing called printer farms, and this sort of leans that way towards printer farming, but it also makes the printer pretty indestructible for, you know, it'll last a long time. And this is an upgrade kit from King Rune. So we're gonna get the King Rune over here, and we're gonna put this upgrade kit on. Should be interesting, so uh, hey, yeah. You know, let's see what they did. Yeah, cool. Okay, we're back. Boom, there's the, the King Rune. We brought, uh, this one is spe very specific. It's a KP3S uh, Pro. I think it's the Pro or it's the X. I guess the Pro. And it's a very specific model. Not a very expensive machine, actually, but it's well built, especially with these uh, linear rails. And the linear rails was what really makes this thing kind of lean towards if you were going to buy 100 of these and have a printer farm or something, this is not a bad choice because it has these linear rails. Keep them lube, keep them clean, and uh, these things will run for very, very long periods of time with very little trouble. So it makes them very consistent. But there is one thing about all 3D printers in general, they have these little rubber wheels, including this one here under this uh, build plate, or those little rubber wheels. They're a little hard rubber, kind of like a nylon rubber wheel that runs with a bearing up and down. And of course they fail and they wear, so you have to adjust them and stuff. Not a big deal, but if you're running a printer farm, you really don't want to be setting, you know, shutting down 50 machines at a time and trying to adjust the wheels to make sure, you know, nothing's wearing out. Or you want consistent prints across 100 machines. And so linear rails really make a difference. That is one thing. Anyways, uh, King Rune sent this over to me. I didn't know it was coming, so it was a shock this morning when it, you know the truck pulled up and said, oh, this, this is for you. Wow, okay, so what do we have? We have an upgrade kit, and it includes a pair of <laughs> really nice linear rails. Now, we've got something going on here that's kind of got me a little confused, and we'll get into this because this is like me, you, we're all you know, finding out. But the first thing you're gonna do with this upgrade kit is make two parts. And I'll see if I, uh, I'm gonna have to send you over to King Room, but I'll give you a link to their Google Drive where you can download the files. There's two little spacer blocks you're gonna need to locate these new linear reels. These linear rail, linear reels, pff, linear rails <laughs> will be located under here to replace those nasty little hard rubber wheels that run up and down. So. Now you'll have linear on this, on the Z-axis, and also up here. Wow, you know, so <laughs> talk about a, a very predictable but very indestructible little machine. What? First thing we gotta do is get all this off, which means taking all these screws, take your, yep, take all this plastic off, and uh, in fact, we may as well just, you know, spin those off, and get them all off, and I'll get this apart, and, Get this off, and when we come back, I'll have the I'll have the bed out of here. I'll have the. Actually, we need to put this somewhere. Uh, let's set this aside till we get the king root apart. So the first thing we did was I took the wheels and the springs off, and so basically we've unbolted the top. Now I'm just going to lay the plate down over here where it's uh, safe keeping for the moment. I have a feeling that part of that kit has something to do with this build plate, but this is what we're. Uh, after actually is to even get this off so we can get to this because this is where our new linear, linear rails will go. Man, I'm having trouble talking today. What is going on with that? And also we need to get this belt off because we got to get all of this uh, out of the way. It's this is uh, as I like to say this is going this is going bye bye soon. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so step one, make those 3D parts I was talking about first. Uh, I'm making them on another printer, so I'm not having a problem. But if you do, make the per parts first before you do this, okay? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm backed off, I've am backed off the uh, drive belt for the bottom here. And we're going to take the front off. And I think I'm going to just slide this out of here. I, well, it's a theory. 
Let's see if we can get her out. And that little bracket I was showing you, I think it goes under the new build plate that goes here. Oh, I shouldn't call it a build plate, but a mounting plate that goes here. I'm not really sure why they had to do this part. It's curious, you know. But, uh, okay, so we're going to try to get that out of there. Yeah, okay, that's dropped out of there, but that hasn't come up. I'm out from out of here. There's two slots that these this is held by. And I think, I think you can get the belts off the bottom, which you should be able to with your fingers or something. There we go. There's one belt. Yeah, there we go. So now she's belt free. And I need to get this front part out of here. Is there more screw? Oh, there's more screws. Ugh. Okay. So I've got the front end off here, and this is like a shortcut. But this this allows me to just roll this out of here, try not to knock the belt around. And there's what we're replacing is is this situation with the hard rubber wheels which already look a little worn and I've barely barely used the machine but we're getting rid of that and we're gonna put two linear rails on here instead so that is this is gonna be cool so I put the two linear rails just loose on top here so you can see what's going on you're making two of these and what you're gonna be doing is putting them like this when you tighten up your bolts because you want this to help center each of these rails on top of the extrude the aluminum uh, here I guess this is what 2020 aluminum yeah and uh, the only other question I've got and I'll get this back to you in a second here as soon as I figure it out is where on this assembly does do these actually go and I think they go near the back like flush with the back or something but I'll be right back and we'll try to figure that part out before we put this together. I've prepped this first rail. I haven't got this one ready yet, but I've put the T-nuts on and you can see they're, I leave them hanging out as well, as reasonably far as I can. They say to put one in each other hole. So that gives me, in this case, five holding T-nuts for the track for here. I think that's plenty for this thing anyways. But the problem is, and let's put this down and see if we can get this uh, located yeah the other thing with these t-nuts is I like to turn them and line them all up so they'll sort of like drop right into the uh, aluminum frame that they're going to be grabbing onto when it comes time because t-nuts are kind of yeah they're kind of funny that way yeah there they go I think they're I think everybody's got a got something in there yep at least I think we got them yeah now uh, I watched the videos from uh, supplied over by King, uh, King Rune and uh, going to go up against the thread that's right here. So right in front of the thread where it's threaded through for these screws, that's going to be my starting point on these linear rails and that's where I'm going to put them. I'm guessing because their instructions for that were like really uh, kind of, uh, yeah, a little lame. So there's my center. And I'm going to come up on the thread where it's just on the thread. And a lot of times, and you'll see this, the screws will pop up on you a little bit. So what you need to do is try to see if you can get the uh, get this to clamp up, which a lot of times it will not. You'll have to struggle with these things. I really uh, don't like them, but yeah, they're kind of a they're a aluminum thing, you know. Like the industry seems to really like these little clamps. A little bit and also need one of these at the back here someplace again same for the same reason try to hold everything in place so I'm gonna put her at the very back and tighten that one up as well and hopefully uh, this will be nice and straight okay so we've got our two linear linear rails uh, just snug down now the other thing I've done is I've taken the clip from the new kit and I've put my rubber belts back on do not look at the original studio video from King Room because it's wrong. Okay, yeah, I, they screwed that up a little bit. I don't know what happened, but this plate, which is the new plate, which is going to go on, put your bolt on here, back here in this corner, because you want this to come back here and hit the uh, limit switch. And so it has to be over here. Uh, for some reason in the video, they were showing it over there, and it was like, okay, that's wrong. Also, the clip was wrong. I don't know, again, how they even, I don't even know how they got the machine back together, but they did. Uh, lucky them. I never have such things. Anyways, uh, the other thing that I want to do is, uh, I guess we'll go ahead and, yeah, let's close that front up because it, it the, the front here needs to be, you know, put back together. I may as well go ahead and do that. 
Now, this is something that is overbuilt, but you know, it's kind of cool. I like overbuilt sometimes. You know, overbuilt sometimes is a good thing. And snug them up good. Again, uh, because of the overbuild situation here, uh, I'm not sure why they did it. Well, I guess it's they felt it was necessary or needed. But they also have these two bolts that go up underneath. So, <clears throat> yeah. So we're going to have to lean the machine back and start those bolts back up again. Which is kind of a, yeah, it's a little bit of a pain in the butt. But, eh, you'll live. Uh, the other thing missing in the uh, King Rune is the adjustment for tightening the bench. And that's because some of the older models didn't have that feature. That was something that King Rune added later was this uh, tightening uh, of the belt so you can adjust the belt tension a little bit. So be, if you have the belt tensioner adjustment like I have, be happy, you know, because actually it makes life <clears throat> a whole lot better. Yeah, it makes it a lot easier to be able to pull the belt through afterwards. Right now, uh, I'm gonna just put a little bit of tension on it with the, uh, the tightener right here. Oops, there we go. Yeah, just so it, just so we don't lose the belt uh, or it slides off. And the bracket comes up and faces that way. So when this goes on, which is gonna, actually it's gonna go on right now, we'll slide these up roughly to where they should be. And we're going to start on this side because I want this clip on there anyway. So, And I'm going to sort of turn this uh, up a little bit. And we're going to use our fingers. And see if we can find the, get it up through the slot and back on. There we go. And the belt is still attached. Everybody's still good. Don't breathe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and now... Let's see if we can get some screws in all of this, which, you know, as you can see, the screw is going in. But you're going to want to slide the whole thing forward and back to make sure that those rails are, you know, basically parallel. So that's going to be another test here in a minute, just to make sure that everything is right before we lock it all down kind of thing. So now, that's pretty snuggy. Man, it comes back to the switch, does it? Yep, right there. Good. Yep, and it goes all the way hip to the front. And the resistance is nice and smooth. Wow. I think we got a successful kit here. I actually really do. And now the hard part. Yeah, you <laughs> the build plate and everything back on. And there's a new plate that they've su uh, supplied with the build plate. And I'm not sure exactly what. I think it's a magnetic plate, but we'll find out in a minute here once we get this all straightened out. Now, may as well explain the size thing too. Uh, the build plate itself is 210 by 210 but the actual capacity build area is 200 by 200. So that confused me because usually, you know, you can sort of uh, <clears throat> use the whole build plate, but apparently you cannot use the whole build plate, I guess. But that's, and that's okay, that's fine. You know, just it was just causing some confusion here because this kit says it's for a 200, it'll create or is a 210 millimeter build area. Now, look at this, I mean, this is so, Oh my god, that is so solid and so beautiful. I mean, it just absolutely glides back and forth with no resistance or anything. Wow. And now we have linear rail, linear rail, and linear rail. So we have what could be a good machine for running on printer farms. Uh, yeah. Yeah, there we go. Woo, that's all nice and tight. So this, that's beautiful. Oh my god, that's perfect. And I can hear the switch going off right as it gets to the end, which is right what you want. Yeah. So this is in the right spot, but uh, we're gonna move to the next, let's move to the next one. Okay, so now the hard part. No, I'm just kidding. Ah, yeah, hey, yeah. This is, um, this is kind of aggravating because you gotta get these four springs <laughs> back underneath these. <laughs> yeah. And then you gotta get the, yeah, you get the threaded and get the little, the adjusting uh, pieces uh, working, so... And I don't remember which holes these even go in. I wonder if this, uh, this will tell me. Mm, there's no real indic... Yeah, there is an indication, but there's only two holes, so... Oh boy. Okay. Let's see if we can figure out what holes belong to this thing. I think they're the smaller set, actually, I believe. 
So now we got to do is put these four back and and then the most important part, what's that? If you don't know the answer to this next question, do not buy do not buy a 3D printer. Don't have, don't go past go. <laughs> Yeah, we're gonna have to level the bed. Yes, get the piece of paper out and do the bed leveling thing and all that. But okay, let's get let's get the rest of this so we can move to this last and final adjustment. Okay, one last item here. Uh, there's something in this packaging and I don't even know what it is. So let's find out what we got going on here. Uh, I've heard stories about a magnetic bed or something. So I'm wondering if that's what we've got here. Wow, yeah it is. Yes it is. Whoo wee. Oh yeah. Ho 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 ho. Oh that is gonna be awesome. Okay, yeah baby. Okay, how do we get install this? Hmm. There's a sticky back plate here. Plus the actual uh, piece here. So we got two pieces. We have the magnetic top, you know, and we have the, I guess we'll call it the magnet. So the magnet should probably, and we'll take this off. We'll see if we can get this off. I don't even know if we can do that. Yeah. Okay, we're gonna take the glass off and throw it away. No, I'm not throwing it away. I'm kidding, I'm just kidding, okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so we can put the magnetic base down here like this. It's on a self-sticky. I think, yeah, yep, there it is. Yeah, so it's on a, it's on a sticky pad. Wow, wait. And I guess we will square that up and put it down like that. Wow, wait. And then. We have a smooth surface with, well, actually it's got a texture to it. It's got a real weird texture to it. And of course the build plate surface, which is really textured so that your prints will stick. Of course we still have to level, oh, oh, that just about, yeah, that grabs the fingers when you do that. Nice, wow, magnetic build plate. Ooh, I like that, yes, yes, yes. So before linear rails, and a magnetic base. Uh, there's the benchy. So I guess the best thing to do is we're going to now with the new linear rails on there. We're going to print another benchy. <laughs> well, I have to thank King Rune for sending this kit over. Now there's one other mysterious part that we didn't use, but that's this right here. This is for the adjustment to the stop limit on the Z-axis. And if you use the glass, like I, maybe I should have, I don't know, and put the uh, sticky base on the glass and then the this magnetic top. It raises the entire bed level height. So uh, this, you need to change it to this so you can adjust it to set your stop. This, something I thought it was worth mentioning. Other than that, uh, man, linear rails, uh, industrial. Uh, don't you love it? <laughs> Before I forget, <laughs> I'll provide links in the description below for where you can get these blocks. Uh, also, of course, the uh, linear kit, and uh, I'll also provide a link for where you can purchase one of these little machines. They uh, apparently that's uh, sort of an industrial grade. <laughs> Interesting. And now let's let's finish this up, right? So after all that work uh, today, we converted. We uh, we ran a benchy. You know. <laughs> This is the old Benchy from when we had uh, this mounting system on here with the old, uh, I guess they're nylon type of wheels that break down. So the new uh, system here with the linear rails, that's great, but yeah, I still got the same Benchy roughly. And in fact, the PLA is pretty poor quality anyways. Uh, it's just free stuff they supply with these uh, machines. They've got rolls of it in here. Uh, so the, really the quality of the Benchy, uh, it shows everything that the last one showed. I don't see any better, you know, more wonderful details or anything spectacular going on. It looks about the same. It's not better, it's not worse. I guess that's a good thing. The linear rails just offer a long-term 3D printer that can run for long, long periods of time. So if you, you put this printer, say like on a printer farm, it's going to produce for a very long time with very low maintenance. And that's what this is sort of about for the $35 
and the work involved, even if I was just a consumer with one printer, and this was my printer, I'd probably still look at doing it because when you run prints off, sometimes the machine is running for days before it finishes you know, something large that it's doing. The Benchy, for example, today was unfortunately uh, one hour and 39 minutes, which is, you know, pretty normal, classic, old-style uh, 3D printing. Uh, yes, the Bamboo P1P will do a Benchy in 17 minutes. I haven't, I don't have one here. I'd like to have one here so I could try all that, but I don't. But in the meantime, yeah, it takes you, you know, this is, look at that thing and say, yeah, it's about an hour and a half, you know, to knock that little guy out. So a large thing uh, could take days. It's the nature of this particular size and this type of printer and things, but you know, I don't want to get into that right now. What I wanted to do was just say, who's, who's the rails for? And anybody that wants to be using the printer for a lot of work and a long time, those rails are going to give you a lot better service life than these wheels. So yeah, you know, it's, that's what that's about. And for the $35, I think that's a terrific upgrade. I do wish, uh, I wish that uh, King Rune would uh, look at a better hot end. This hot end works, it's okay, but I do see some, like the Bowden tube thing going on here. I do see some areas of improvement which could be upgraded or something, but you know, that today was really something, plus the magnetic uh, plate. Uh, that was something again, you know, which, you know, a great, great item. Uh, we do love it and it's got a great textured uh, finish to it. So your 3D print is gonna stick really well. Like right now, yeah, I can't even get the Benchy off of there just yet unless I really, you know, pull on it or something. Generally, I like to let my plates cool down and then, you know, the pot, the part will just virtually pop off when this uh, reaches uh, room temperature. Oh man, what a day. Uh, this was not planned, of course, so sorry about that. <laughs> but when this came in, it was like, well, everybody that has a King Rune needs to know, and uh, we need to talk about it and show what you know the uh, upgrade is. So that was great. M meantime, so thank you for checking in on Coffee and Tools. We do 3D printing, but we all do see do-it-yourself projects and wood and all kinds of things, and we give away stuff. Got a giveaway on this Thursday, got a giveaway next Thursday, got giveaways going on all the time with uh, free stuff that we give to our viewers. So that's always worth watching, right? You know, so please like, share, subscribe, and ring the notice bell if you want to get in on those uh, contests. In the meantime, uh, just thank everybody else for watching and uh, man, over and out. Wow.